Hello everyone, my name is Protesilaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to talk to you about VC, the version control framework that is built into Emacs. I want to show you the main features of this tool and then discuss how you might uh, use it in tandem with or parallel to Magit or an equivalent uh, package for your version control operations. So what I have over here is the directory editor, Dyard, uh, an empty directory that I just created for the purposes of this demo. And I want to create a new file so that we can showcase the features of VC. Just to say before I get started that VC is a generic framework and it is meant to work with several version control systems, one of which is Git. In practice, I am only using it with Git because it is the only uh, version control system that I am familiar with. But what I am about to show you here should work with other backends as well. So anyway, I am creating a file now over here. Let's call it file zero. It doesn't really matter. In a register, I have already stored some text that I can uh, put here and insert it over here. And now I am at the point where, let's go back to Dyard, where I have created my first file and my intention now is to initialize this directory as a git repo. So let's go back to our file over here and run the most useful or the most common rather of the VC commands, which is control X V and then the letter V. Control X V is the common prefix for all VC related commands. So you will see it all the time as I am doing this demo. Control X V V calls the command VC next action. And this means to perform the next logical action depending on what it is that you are currently doing. The next logical action after creating a new file in an empty repo, in an empty directory rather, is to initialize that directory as a version control directory, in this case git init, I want to do git init, and to make this file uh, trackable, to track this file by the version control system. So you can see in the mini buffer, I am being asked for a VC backend. This is uh, this offers me completion, I can type in, but git is the first option because this is what I am selecting. And then the directory that I want to make a git repository, I will specify the present working directory. And now I have, let's see again, Dyard, let's refresh. I can see that I have the git directory, what you would expect after a successful git init and the file that I am working on. So that's great. Let's uh, start again, control X V V the next logical action, which is the next logical action after you have created and saved the file in a newly created git repo is to commit your changes. So I can see here, I have the commit uh, buffer, the summary of the commit, initial uh, commit, let's call it, the summary should never exceed 50 characters in length uh, for the purposes of readability when you are uh, scanning a log, whereas the summary's uh, message, the body of the commit, which is uh, separated by an empty line that is here denoted as this border that you are seeing is uh, the body of the message of the message can be much longer. You can write an essay if you will, though you shouldn't do that unless it is necessary. The body of the message, uh, write, write info here. And if you continue to uh, type in, you should, of course, uh, have a system that uh, wraps your lines uh, to less than 80 characters, again, uh, in the interest of readability. Once you are done with your commit message, you can hit Control C twice to commit your changes or Control C, Control K to cancel what you are doing here and go back to your file. Before I commit, I just want to highlight the fact that this uh, commit is also informing me about the affected files. In this case, it is file zero. If you have more files, you will see more files in that area. So let's do control C twice 
to confirm our changes, to commit our changes. Now I want to uh, view a log of the changes that I have made to the current file. Control X V L will produce a log for the current file and I can see the uh, commit uh, unique number for this uh, change, the author of this change, the date and time and of course the summary and the, mes the body of the commits message. While I am here, if I do D, if I hit D, it will produce a diff with the changes that were committed. In this case, it was just an addition of text, so nothing was removed. So that's very nice indeed. Let's go back over here and work some more. Let's say uh, I am adding uh, some feature uh, and I am saving this and now I am doing uh, again Control X VV and I am saying add uh, feature. I am adding this uh, feature and I am committing it. Let's uh, confirm that our log has been updated. You can see it. Let's uh, see again a diff. You can see what the diff is about, just this addition. Let's come back over here. Now let me show you what you can do with diffs. Let's say that this file is being reviewed by some other person. Let's say that this file has been published online and this other person opens it in Emacs and notices a critical bug. So they go and uh, they fix the bug and they save their changes. And once they do that, they do control X V and the equals sign to produce a div. Actually, I shouldn't have uh, added that empty line over there. Let me see the white space just to be sure. Okay. So control X V and the equal sign, you can see the changes, you can see how they are uh, let's actually increase this a bit. You can see how uh, the highlighted changes on the line are uh, shown. And so this person has fixed the bug. And now they want to send me a patch that fixes the issue on my side. So what they could do is control X, control W to write this buffer, this diff to a file. So it could be a file, whatever name, you will have to name it appropriately, of course. Let's call it uh, fixbug.patch uh, or .diff, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that when you are viewing it inside of Emacs, that you have diff mode enabled. And we will see why uh, this matters. Uh, let's uh, save it and let's uh, close this now and let's say that this person is sending me this patch or I retrieve it somehow from the web and I am saving this patch to the directory where the affected file is concerned and let's say that before I do anything in the meantime I have reverted this yes control x v u will undo all the changes that you have introduced and revert back to the last known state uh, that was committed to the version control system, in this case, git. So let's say that I am, let's go to the directory editor and let's say that I am now reviewing the patch that I received and I can see here that indeed a fix has been introduced. So if I want to apply this patch to the file, while I am over the diff hunk, the specific changes that I am looking at, I can do control C, control A, and this applies the patch to the files concerned. You can see already that the file has changed. You can see that it has not been saved yet. And if I do control X, control S, of course, the file is saved now and it is ready to be committed again control X V V uh, fix a uh, bug and uh, you confirm your choice and let's sorry let's review what we have let's review you can see that we have the add feature and then fix bug okay and you get the idea how this would work this is a great way of course to uh, send a patch uh, via email without having to go through the whole process of 
uh, creating a profile on GitHub, GitLab or whatever, uh, doing the whole thing with um, pull or merge request. You know, it's a quite a complicated uh, process. Where are he whereas here, you make the changes, you produce a diff, you save that, that diff, send them to the other person and then they can uh, patch their uh, file accordingly. Uh, let me show you now another feature by actually uh, switching to a real project. Let's switch over here and let's uh, go to this uh, file and let's highlight a piece, a part of the file. What I want to do here is I want to see how this specific section came into being. How was it formed? Who contributed to it? So what I can do here is do control X, V and H. Control X, V and H will produce, you can see over here, VC history. Let's focus a bit on this one. We can see that this has the form of a Git log, what I had earlier, not of a Git log, of a VC log. You can see how it is the same thing as the VC log, but you can also see that the diffs are embedded in the log. So you can use meta N and meta P to go from one diff to the next. And of course, you can move this the way you would. What is of interest here is that you can see who the author is what the commit is, of course, the date and everything, the commit uh, message and all that. And of course, you can now find, for example, that this specific part was contributed by another author. Thank you very much, by the way. And that's very nice indeed. So now you can go to your files and see uh, who did what. Uh, and that's very nice indeed. If you need something more uh, complex or broader in scope, you can use uh, VC annotate. This is bound by default to control X V and the letter G, and this will annotate the entire buffer. Let's see this in practice and uh, color coded depended, depending on how old it is. So the older it is, the more blue it will look, the newer is uh, red. So you can see again over here that it goes to the file line by line and does this uh, thing where it shows the commit where this line came from and then applies the color uh, using this uh, color coded system. So you can see everything that has gone into this file. You can see again that these lines were added by uh, this author over here and this is another uh, useful way to uh, do the um, what's it called git blame this is how it is called so you can really uh, track down everything and see where a part of the file uh, came from what was its origin the commit the author the date everything so that's very useful indeed let's go back to our uh, test VC. I don't think I have much more uh, to tell you about. There is, of course, VC dir, which I, which is by default bound to control X V D, but I rebind it to control X V P with some changes that I have made to it. And this one works like the directory editor, like Dired. You can mark uh, files and then uh, do a commit on both of the marked files, on, on the marked files more generally. And there are some other commands that you, can, that you can use. I don't want to show you everything. The idea with this is just to offer you an introduction. Uh, and then, of course, you can explore things yourself. Here is a nice tip. Regardless of whether you are using the which key package or not, if you are using it, that's better for you. But even without it, you can do uh, you can start a key chord, any key chord, control X V in this case, and then do control H, the universal help command. And this will produce a buffer. Let's actually enlarge this so that we can see this will produce a buffer and it will show you all the key bindings that you can run and all the commands that they do you can see for example revert what i did earlier control x v u you can see that if you want to push to a remote 
you can do control X V and capital P. If you want to produce a diff for all the files in the project, you will do control X V and capital D and so on so forth, not to bother you with all the technicalities. The thing is that uh, you have a very uh, general idea now of what this tool is and of how you might want to incorporate it in your workflow. Uh, with, these, uh, with these granted, I just want to conclude with the fact that uh, in my mind, Magit is still the superior option if you want to make use of the advanced or the power user features of Git, but there are lots of scenario where what you really need is to, to just make a change, commit this and no need to worry about the advanced features of Git. So for me personally, I have carved a niche for the VC framework whereby I will only use it for special tasks like patching something using uh, the diff format or for committing a very small change, for example, fixing a typo or things of that nature. But I will always rely on Magit for a more uh, demanding tasks when I want, for example, to stage a part of a commit, but not the whole commit no, uh, of a diff, sorry to stage part of a diff, when I want to uh, do complex things with uh, rebasing my Git history or with merging from another branch, including a remote branch and things of that nature. But that's uh, the very uh, basics of it. That's an introduction to the VC framework for Emacs. I am very happy to have discovered this and I hope that this demo offers you an inspiration uh, to get started. Just to conclude, whenever you are in a VC related buffer, you can do control H M. This is the universal help command for the major mode you are in to get further help, contextual help on what uh, kind of key bindings and commands that mode offers. And finally, I will also link to my .emacs in case you want to copy the very few things that I have about a VC. That's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.